We're at Jeff's place. We're doing some wood today, just like we told you we were gonna do. Uh, yeah, Jeff will take over from here. <laughs> here we go. Well, I was telling you guys earlier, this, um, uh, and I've said it before and, and talked a lot about uh, slicing up these um, strips into one thirty-second of an inch, but I thought, I was doing it this morning, so I left, left this out. But um, this, is, this is a chunk of uh, uh, eight quarter mahogany. And I slice it up that thin, which is about three thirty second of an inch. And uh, when I'm bored, uh, you know, this will make, I don't know, 40, 40 or 50 strips, I guess. And it uh, comes out about that thick. There you go. Uh, three thirty second of an inch. And then uh, this is my drum sander. And I'll sand this through, take about five or six passes, and change that into that. Mm -hmm. And that's 330, that's uh, 132nd, which is 0 0.030 or 032. This is um, the reason I have different colors. You remember we talked about um, having the last piece that we're, is going to be exposed inside the door frame, uh, a nice color. That's what these are going to be for. These are the, the nice grained pieces. So you'll have uh, 11 strips, I guess, and then uh, or 10 strips, and then the 11th would be like that. Right. So you got it. Oh, wow. So from that, I see something I like. It's pretty cool over there on top of the, <laughs> the, the drill press. Oh. Uh, that was a practice piece. Shoehorn made out of mahogany. Yeah. So from, from, from that, mm -hmm. I, I made, and I'm still using that, this, is a... Well, this is now, would you? Well, this is, this is, this is the buck yeah. that I thought I could go around and around and around and around. And then I realized that wasn't going to work for me. Uh, however, it's not all wa a waste of uh, time and effort because uh, when I make a piece, I uh, use this sort of to train the wood. And I'll leave that. Just keep it bent there for a just while. Just keep it bent there for a day or two days or yeah. whatever. And then, I'm, and then, then I'll transfer that. You would never put any water or moisture on that. Would you? I tried it a little bit. But... It doesn't. It, some people say it, it works. Some people say it doesn't. Wouldn't it affect the? the yeah. The and the other thing is, if you wet all these pieces and then clamp yeah, it together, really, yeah. all this stuff. Well, no, all this stuff never really dries. Okay. Right, inside here. So, they say that uh, bending wood can be done um, in a number of ways. One is steam bending. One is making them as thin as possible so they'll bend by themselves. That's what you've done. Right? You know? I think that's easiest. Now. You remember the piece that I originally built all in one piece here? It didn't quite fit yes. the hole. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I, I, I actually you added material. I added a little bit of material right in here. Yep. Trimmed it down because the rest of the, the rest of the piece fit in here. Mm -hmm. So I tightened up this hole just a little bit. So plan B was we were going to make pieces like that. Here you go, look at that now. Right. Yeah. And then after that piece, we make that piece. Right? Yes. You've, you've obviously got that cut, so you can cut them and make them. Well, what I'll do is when I get back to the car, I'll have a look at that. No, mm -hmm. I'll... Actually, before I come, I'll cut this probably here and here. Mm -hmm. I'll cut down, I'll probably leave this right here, okay? And then when I'm in the car, when I'm at the car, I'm going to make a mark here and here on the car. Yes. And then I'll introduce... It's sister. This piece right here. Right now, right? Right. Yeah. And then I'll mark it here. And here. You're cooking with gas now, aren't you? Well, cooking gas. We're, we still have plan D and E and F if this doesn't work. You know? D, E, and F. <laughs> well, we're at, well, we're at B or C now. Okay. But, you know, I mean, this is this is without having the um, 
This is without having the car door here. For sure. Right? Yeah. So <clears throat> actually the other thing we're gonna do, um, you know, we talked about trimming along the edge of the car. I'll introduce this piece and we're actually I think we'll screw it to the car. I think we'll call it, that is where that sits. Yeah. Right? Yep. And then we'll do that tracing. I can bring that home. Yeah. Cut that. And then, then hopefully have... If they screw it all to the car, yeah. probably, then, yeah. Then I understand. You'd be able to see, trace it all you off. See, you see where these two meet up? You know? Yeah. You just have to find a happy medium if you right. can look down here. I do the exact deep. same thing with metal, cross it over, and then zip cut it. Yeah. And then it fit together, yeah. I so just, those, yeah. Those, those two fit just perfectly in there, right? I just have to find a common line to yeah. have them meet up. Mm -hmm. And even the Bugatti doors have an obvious, not, not massive gap, but Bugatti never intended for it to look like one homogenous piece of wood. You can tell on every picture there's three pieces. And they, this piece is from about here to here. Yeah. Maybe here, I'm not sure. And then a piece from here to here, and a piece from here to here. There's this nice piece of uh, mahogany. This, huh? And, uh, just to show you, I'm going to sit down for a second. Get away. Show them the fin they made for your car. Show them the fin. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. I made a fin for Jolene's car. That's going on the back just like that. We said monkey sticks that's for, first, but for a Subaru. <laughs> for Subaru, yeah. So, uh, so that's, that's what the inside, that's what we want the, wow. the exposed wood look to look like. This is very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. I hope Bugatti don't get mad at us because so actually I wanted nice I wanted them all oh, to have the same huh? you, baby these you want... these are all coming from the same piece of timber oh. right beautiful okay. Can we bring this down to show Jeff Are you gonna, you're gonna reveal it well it is what it is you're revealing the wood um, Jolene has this material we went to the next door neighbors it's hard to believe she said she had some material, and uh, that's what Jolene was looking for, some ostrich. It took a long time to find a bunch of ostriches. <laughs> Especially in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> they tend to hide in the winter. So that's where we're at with that. It's awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, we have a plan anyways, huh? Jeff, I'm in your way. You should just tell me to get out of your way. I'm trying to sit in the corner, you know what I'm saying? The best thing so, can... but we yeah. came here to drill holes. Oh, that's actually a little piece that I uh, put some finish on. Yeah. I wish I had a camera to show you Jolene's smile. <laughs> that's good. She's loving it. Mm -hmm. Good. So, we decided to start the camera up when... Uh, Chad said, oh, you've already drilled this hole. So this is, this is the, um, the steering wheel ball swivel, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And when I set out, so I, I, made, I made a dummy because the last thing I want to do is make a mistake on this piece. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I took the original ball swivel, What grit sandpaper do you have on that bad boy? This is 80 grit because I'm not terribly concerned about the finish. Okay. But I um, I run a... So 80 grit's tearing your wood down where you need it. Yes. Yeah. I like 80 grit. 80 grit. 40. I don't have 40. I can't get 40. You wouldn't want 40 to put it, I imagine. Well, I tell you what, I'd make a mess pretty quick. But that's a... That's the drum there. Okay. So this is just feeding it through. Yes. Okay. And I, I tell you what, sandpaper. This is something that not a whole lot of woodworkers have, but once you have it, oh my goodness, it's just an amazing. You know, you don't know how you live without it. We sure could get a nice flat board out of it. You know. Yes. Yeah. Actually, you don't get a flat board. You get a parallel board, because if it had to have a yeah swale to it, it'll follow the swale, right? Okay. Same with the thickness planer. And. You need a jointer to make it flat. So, but uh, 
So I, I intended on copying this. And I was a little bothered with the double ring out here. So what I wanted to do was recess it. Yes. Right. How, many, how many rings does that bad boy have on it? Like well, it's got three. There's two on the outside. Yeah, there's three that comes with it. Yep. Okay, you took. Well, no, that's that's yours. You gave me one a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, did I? Okay. That's good. We got two right there, baby. I was wondering where the other one's at. <laughs> that will be for the, this for the dash, obviously. And that one can be for the firewall. So we have perfect. Yes. Yeah, we can lock it in right there. We can lock that one in there. So that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So that's the way that sits. And it's so it's only one ring proud. Yeah. And it also allows for the for the second for the third ring. I'm sorry. Right. To sit on the back and, and Great. bolt on. Perfect. That's the way they're made and, for and three it rings. Swivels. Shovels just like we wanted it to. Perfect. And if you want, I can show you the process that I went through to, to make all that happen. Die grinder and a chisel? Yep. <laughs> and a big old sledgehammer. <laughs> so, actually, what I did, I used this as a, as a dummy. I, I tried to figure out what I was going to do with this. So I, I, f I found, found the, the, the length here, the, the, the center, the on center length, scribed a line here, found the center this way, scribed a line that way. Then I wanted these bolt holes to be exactly six o'clock, two and 10 o'clock. And how I was going to do that was figure out the, the, the offset of this hole on the ring, which happens to be a quarter of an inch. So I made another ring here. Oh. Then... I took a 30-60, a 30-degree triangle. This is one hole. This must be the next hole, right? And there's the next hole. And it works. <laughs> I had traced it. Well, actually I did. I put the ring over top of it and it worked. But now, so then I drilled this hole, I drilled this hole, I drilled this hole. Then I needed to get this recess done. So what I did was I made a template that's exactly three and seven eighths of an inch. And we can go ahead and do it if you want, but I, I stuck this on with double-sided tape. Exactly there. Mm -hmm. Then more to it again than I thought. <laughs> That's why it's easier to judge because you don't have to think. Well, and you know what? You have, you know, and I just I, I, <laughs> here. Here's the reason why I wanted to do this ahead of time because if this went wrong, there would be no video. It'd be everybody going home. So then I take a router. Also, oh, it's nice to work and, and try not to explain well, at the same time. If it screws it all up. It's hard. Yeah. I mean, let's face it, it takes something to work and explain at the same time. So I plunge this router and there's a little ball bearing there, right? And it follows that hole. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. That gave me this recess. Yeah. yeah. So you made the recess first and then drilled that hole? Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then I had the center hole right here. Yeah. So then I went over and I drilled a uh, two and seven eighths inch hole. With one wood bit? Like you have a quick bit that went right down through that? Yeah. Okay. And then I painted it. Right. 
and I went in the house and had dinner. That was great. That was, was Perfect. Really, yeah, I was happy with it. Yeah. So, um, like I say, I, I was really reluctant to, to, to attempt that uh, for the first time, even even the second time after I'd done it once. Yeah. So that's the way that's done. So, the next thing we want to do is uh, mark up this so that we can... So you'll so, just take, take that and lay that on top of that? Is that what you're going to do? No, I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to mark it up. I'll mark it up. So, I did this uh, last week just to make sure that, you know, it, it, it's laid out the way we liked it. I sent, uh, sent you guys some pictures and everybody was happy. So... Now we'll lay it out again and drill real holes. What's your name? Jeff's gonna sharpen his pencil. I hadn't done that for a while. I went over to the pencil sharpener and done that. It's <laughs> hey, been a long time. That was my grandfather's pencil sharpener. Well, there you go. He's watching you. So I've actually, this is, a lot of, a lot of woodworkers call this a story hole. Uh, everything, all the measurements I need are on here. You know, eight and seven sixteenths on center here, four and five sixteenths. 14 inch mark here So I now that I know everything is the way I like it I suppose everybody wants a good and square when you're doing woodwork, eh? Yeah, you only get one chance at it. So 14 18 and a half I'm gonna use this square again Another piece of wood. We get to see some holes today, baby. Mm -hmm. 18 and a half is the middle. No, 18 and a half is not the middle. 14 over here. Inspired, wrote the care, and then we're going to a chop. <laughs> there you go. The reason I've got another board underneath here is because I don't want this sharp edge of the fascia s scooping up underneath the fence. Okay. Because then it'll be off. Right? So, and then I measure up one and three eighths. One and three eighths. Three and three sixteenths. Three and thirteen sixteenths. Measure twice, cut once. One, two, three and a quarter, three sixteenths. Two and three quarter. One, two, three quarter. Two and three quarter. One, two. One and three eighths. Three and three sixteenths. Three and thirteen sixteenths. I said it again, didn't I? That look right. What's that stuff? It's a little, just a little rubber mat, I guess. It's a sanding mat. It's a rubber mat. That, that one there? Just look at that one there, Jeff. Take a look at it. See what you think. That one there right on the money, is it? The whole line, it looks like it's over a bit. Yeah. Huh? You're doing it, buddy. I'm just fine. Actually, both just, lines, both just, lines are in a little bit. So 14 inches. That should be all right. Should be all right. Yeah, 14 inches. So as a matter of fact, these 
This is 14 inches on the original. Yes. These are a little less. This is a sixteenth of an inch. So, cheers. Like and share. And Jeff has a page, and we'll give that to you later on. Like and share and comment. If well, I don't have, I don't have, I don't have a uh, YouTube page because as I said before, we'll just give you so many followers you have to yeah. get. Yeah, but uh, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, Jeff Webster Woodworking. Um. What do I want to do? So these are two and a sixteenth. We can drill them first. I'm going to use a Forstner bit for that. And I had that already. If you're learning anything, comment. If you're learning anything, comment. If you're not learning anything, comment. That's the only way that we can grow. Is it not? Grow. We need we need growth. If we're not growing, we're getting smaller. We want to grow. As a human and in life. You know what I mean? Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Coming over and getting close to me. All right. She did enough of that yesterday. Good thing she don't post that stuff. She tells all the time. She got some she got some uh, some dirty hardware. Now we want this to enter the wood square and even, right? So this, this is called a tilt box. And it tells me my table's at zero, exactly level. And my bits at 0.3. Wow, you're, you're precise. Zero, zero, okay? So this is perpendicular. That's a good thing. Otherwise, I otherwise I tweak the table a little yeah. bit. Yeah, I understand that. I probably wouldn't have thought of it, but well, now it, that I know, yeah, you can make a little bit of a mess going into this. Uh, and I'm going to I get you. We would do the same thing with the center punch on metal. Yep. You get one of those ones that go... Yeah, a snap one? Yeah. Yeah, but it can be a little precarious at times. It could jump off on you, eh? Yeah. I would never thought the center punch on wood. I would never thought of that just because it's so soft. But that will see. Well, it. this is going to actually not so much... This is going to tell me where to start drilling. Yes. It'll, it'll help me right. here, right? Um, the other thing you can do, and I don't think I'm going to worry about it too much, but I could have taped this whole thing. Right. I don't put tape on it to keep it from, from tearing out. We do that. But with I'm pretty sometimes. confident with this bit. Yeah. We do that with paint sometimes. So I'm going to use this as a backup. Right. That dash is on straight, Jeff. You like that? Oh, that board is just as straight. And I'm telling you, I got not a bad, not a bad eye, but that board is pretty straight. Pretty, pretty much on the money. It is. I'm gonna bring this up just a bit. I am plugged in. Measure twice, cut once. You ready? He's gonna clean up and drill at the same time. Well, I tell you what, anybody that's in the uh, oil, oil business knows you gotta clean the hole. You ready? Okay, you learned that, yeah. is that why you're saying that, or is that yeah, true? No, yeah, no, because cause if, if you're not taking the chips out of the hole, right? they just sit in there and, and cause Issues. nothing but. Yeah. Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> yeah, I put my vacuum in the shed here in the uh, closet.
Now once you get once you get the the bit into the hole, it's not gonna go very far. I'm just doing this for you. That's actually quite interesting because you remember this this piece is made of two different uh, layers of substrate. Yeah. And you can feel it when you make the transition between the two different pieces of plywood. What is that? Huh? What kind of plywood? Actually it's called Russian birch, I think. Or Baltic birch. It's that multi ply stuff. That's one. That's 25% of the way. Ah, 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 one. <laughs> one. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> then we'll get to throw the gauges in on it. Yes, sir. And see what the gauges look like. And we're going to wipe it down, maybe. Jeff, maybe, will tease us, wipe it down, put the gauges in it. And then, like, we'll do that thing that Doug says. Make sure your tool's hurt before you get horny. <laughs> You know if I sanded it all down before we got started, as opposed to the last time. There were some people asking why we bother to even put any finish on it. But putting the finish on it sort of stabilizes the this this the the hair you supposed to put it on there. Huh? <laughs> what can you put it on there? That would, that would think that you would put it on like this way instead of it's easier to sand it with, with no holes in it with any right. holes Actually, in it. That's right. Actually, some guys will do all the holes and then veneer it. And oh. then put the veneer on it. Um, I wouldn't do it I that just, way. I just find it simpler to... Uh, well, this is the easiest way. Yeah. Yeah, one piece of wood, polish it, cut the holes in Well, and it's not polished yet, it's, but it's, the, the veneer is stabilized with some finish on it. And then, uh, then I'll sand it all down again, and I'll put another, I'll, I'll hit it again with more finish. 
all the new polish and you have stuff inside the holes and you know the one board is, is much better I would think by far. Yeah. Just about an hour and a half drive from us. So we drove an hour and a half this morning. You know, get here and get the dash done. But we were excited about it yesterday. We did a little picking. Today we're drilling some wood. Jeff usually drills oil. So he's drilling wood today. No comment, eh? <laughs> oh, it's funny because you know, it just sits there and augers away and augers away. And then now I think I've switched into the other piece of plywood. Yeah. And it's just going great guns now. You might get hurt if it smells like that too, don't you? Oh, yeah. When you're drilling for oil, you choose different bits for uh, whatever you're drilling. Here you only got one bit. You gotta make do with everything. See, if we were drilling through this cheaper plywood, it'd be, it'd be gone. Because you'd be through it already. I like the anticipation better. It takes a little longer, the anticipation gets bigger. If you know what I'm saying, the longer it takes. Did you show your material with the wood on top of that? That wood? Same as you can probably are you? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not telling anybody how much it is. <laughs> Two holes! Ha 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 ha! I'm going to continue on until I get another <laughs> bleeding. The count wood. Hmm? The count wood. Measure twice, cut once. See it, and each step you make, you get closer to the to the end goal. The harder it is to. Well, now that so many of found that material, it means I have to sort of finish those seats. You don't have to get a bolt, you know, bolt to find how to connect it to the floor. Get the sides looking, you know, we got it quite thick on the side. I don't know if you want it thinner or not. But now, you know, I really have to make them work now. There's more work to be involved. You can drill the holes in it, put a bracket on it, all that sort of stuff. You're getting the dash done. I think that means that means I got a lot of work to do. I think once you get that. Sorry, Jimmy. Okay. I get up off my seat for that. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I think in a poster we'll just we'll love having a look at those seats, you know? Yeah. And then we'll know exactly what to do with them. It's not the only thing that Well, we've got enough photographs, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what the rest of the time is going off in the photograph. Right? That's what the rest of the time is going off in the photograph. Yeah. That's what the rest of the time is going off in the photograph. Yeah. That's what the rest of the time is going off in the photograph.
tell you what, whatever, whatever, uh, I can't remember if it's the thick plywood or the thin plywood on top. But whatever one's on bottom, sure drills a whole lot nicer. The, the very bottom last millimeter, it's on the bit. I'm done. Three. Ah, 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 ah. So, you know, so you know you're finished. Can't wait to see it. Um, it's warm. Oh, yeah. yeah it's warm. Ow. <laughs> it's that warm, huh? No, I just... Okay, last one. Last one for the two and That's the finish. Well, on the, on the trailer park, boys, they had a, a wing made of a hockey stick. Really? Yeah, hockey sticks. Just making all the templates. Time. You're way further ahead. You know, use the template. Yeah, it takes you time, but overall, when it's all said and done, you know, you don't uh, you save yourself the heartache of screwing it up, right? Yeah, you're better off screwing up on a piece of cheap plywood. Yeah. Five months ago, and you bought a piece of uh, it's a plant stand, but it's I don't know, bird's eye maple, or it's a but we didn't realize what we were getting into until we see how it's done now. But it's with this tall, and it's probably 10 inches by 10 inches, and it's all the meter, right? wow. and it's made of the bird's eye maple. We'll have to show it to you sometime. Got stairs in there. That's funny, a lot of people think that, you know, veneer, veneer is, is a cheap, is a, is a cheap way of building furniture, and maybe, uh, you know, when you go to Ikea and you see, and that's where I think we got the bad taste in our mouth for veneer, but like I say, you know, you could not go out and buy a chunk of caramel tequila like this. To build a, a bookcase, you know? I've got a bookcase in the house that's made of solid mahogany and the panels are all uh, waterfall bobinka. You'd never find that, right? But the panels are all in here. And, uh, you know, you go into some of the highest, highest end furniture stores and anything with any kind of real figured wood is in here, you know? Yeah, really, right? I guess here sort of gives some bad, bad name where it ticks off and no one can fix it. Well, yeah, you know, I think, uh, like I say, uh, Ikea gave it a bad name, right? But, you know, my, my, my grandfather's uh, uh, Vienna regulator wall clock, you know? It was all curled walnut veneer, you know? All these, all you know, the automotive, automotive wood is all walnut veneer, uh, Carpathian elm, bird's eye maple. Um, even the new, the new cars, the Mercedes. Quite interestingly, the Mercedes from uh, '98 to about 
2008 or, or 2010, all of their wood came from uh, New Brunswick. Dale Smith, I was the favorite. But, uh, that's hard. Now, if that made you nervous, wait until we put this in there. Oh, wow. I bought a, um, I bought a hole saw like this. I was kind of wondering what you were reacting. Yeah. Huh? But, in all honesty, I have more faith. I didn't, I haven't tried that, that big old DeWalt hole saw. It looks amazing. It's expensive, but I've drilled a lot of holes with this. You know, it'd be too easy to mess up with holes. Like, like even just like hole saws from metal, like they did. I know they wish you were, they worked nice, but they don't work the greatest. Well, this 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 you looks know, a metal pretty. Hole saw cutter, like this yeah. thing looks pretty evil. The one that I the one that I got. But uh, so you did what you have now is you just have that bit longer than what that arm's gonna reach. Correct. Yeah. To go into the wood, I mean. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, I want to make sure everything is tight. Everything's going good by, by books, things. Yes, everything is going good. Sharp on, on the edges there a little bit. Yeah, but I'll. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll sand that all flat. I'll paint these all mm -hmm. with this brown paint before. Yep. But I mean, there's there's the there's the two thicknesses. Actually, the skinny, the uh, the thin piece of plywood is on top, and then the the thicker piece of plywood is on the bottom. You can tell where it's cutting the hardest because yeah. because it's burnt. Yeah. The top is cutting the hardest on the wood because you can see the black rings, right? So you can tell. That's how I'm thinking that it, it, it burnt it a little bit. So I believe and down on the bottom is not. This is three and three eighths. Listen here now. That's a knuckle buster. <laughs> That's a little less than three and three eighths. So, I'm just gonna do that measure twice and cut once thing. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll just move my piece of tape here, just a bit. And I wanna move it out that much, but only half, right? Because this is the radius. About like that. Three and three eighths. Yeah. Or if you want to, I can do it from zero. Three and three eighths. Okay, folks. Get that thing spiked. <laughs> yes. Is that the name? <laughs> now. Now the big hole. If you were worried about that one. Yeah, let's watch this one. Hold my beer. There you go, hold my beer. About like that. Ah. 
And I'm just gonna my first my first objective is just to scar the veneer. I want to get through the veneer first, like that. And now I really can't damage the surrounding veneer. I was hoping to be through with the drill bit. No, I'm, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and do a bit on the back side, and then I'll come back up front. I just want to start the back side so that I don't punch out. This is when you get nervous in the grass arbor and chicken house, Dave. Especially when you don't know what's going on. I'm not taking my eye off that bit at all. Or have the board jump. You'll know. One coaster. <laughs> it's warm. Nice hockey puck. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it's interesting. Uh, I'd borrow that around. The yeah. I would. That's from the uh, MGTC. Okay. I don't know what that was. So this is not your first haul? No. I've been doing this for a while. I was thinking, like, one of those, you know, those hole saw. That'd be hard cut. Huh? That'd be a hard cut with a drill and a hole saw. Well, yeah. yeah. It would be. And you know what? I just, I've done this enough with this saw that yeah. I've, I've, I, uh, 
this thing actually is probably is well over older than me. Okay. It was my grandfather's. But you just take this out and sharpen it, right? Mm-hmm. Measure twice, cut once. She's probably pretty warm right at the moment. Okay. Okay. did. <laughs> there you go. Look at that. Cool. That's number six. Ah, 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 ah. Last one. That's awesome. Now. <clears throat> now, I know because I've uh, tried this before, these ones, uh, two of your gauges Two and a sixteenth. They're just a little, a little chubby. So I'm gonna give these a little rip on the uh, sander here, and I need to turn this on. So. <laughs> This, I've got a belt sanders on it as well. Yes. And if I want to, if I want to get really aggressive, I've got a 50 grip, okay. and that removes the wood pretty quick. white one. 
around. I can't remember what that was. Actually, what we can do, I'm going to put this on. Did you want the back side of it? Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to grab a Allen wrench. Tell you what, the, uh, the instructions are pretty uh, intense. On that. Match up the rings and this and that, and make sure number two. The yeah, I was just kind of. Okay. <laughs> make sure you don't drop anything. Can we hold it? Yeah, I'm gonna. I got her. They've got a lock and nut on them, so they're, they they turn a little harder than most. Pizza's done. I have no idea where that came from, do we? Caught up with the uh, Allen key set. No, anywhere I think that came off of? This gauge. Now, I think for what we want to do. Oh, we can just. Uh, I was wondering if you had that on there for like like that, like this one. It can't. And let me tell you what, I have five inch and a quarter screws. Yes. I'm not sure what inch and a half will do. But anyways, I've got them specifically. You would never want to poke up through the veneer. No, I don't. I can I can sand them off with the grinder. <laughs> I've got them set aside specifically. Just, uh, I think I think we're in the right spot. <laughs> She's. I hope so. Should be all right. <laughs> And then the other one that's down in the garage yeah. is is square on, yeah. right? So I can spray with it, spray on it. 
Okay, so you made a stand for you had to spray that on the stand. Yes, so I can get up underneath. Okay. Look at that now, huh? These guys are the fat ones. Ooh, look at that, just enough. Ah. Remember that for sending you know I fought over with? <laughs> they sent me a brand new one with the with the gauge. I'm gonna fight with it again, damn it. <laughs> RPMs over here. How high will I will a jag engine there? What's what's the well 5,500, unless um, it's been balanced and blueprint. The old boy that did uh, Dad's 120. Yeah. He says, I, he says, I didn't build this engine for your dad. I built it for you. <laughs> um, he mm -hmm. says it should do 7,000. Wow. Mine. Not that I've ever done it. Look at that now, would you? Huh? Look at that now, would you? Wow. Hop diggity dog. Beautiful. I like this down a little bit more. I like that down. Yeah, I, I smell yeah. the difference. Yeah, I like it down. Are you able to wipe anything on that and bring that color back up so we can really have a wow factor? Jeff's going to please this one more time. Probably for the gauge. Boop. Sharp, mm -hmm. very sharp. Smells very nice. That looked good on the plywood, but boy, oh boy, you know. That shouldn't burn. Anymore. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Well done. Mm -hmm. Well done. Jolene's happy. <laughs> if anybody wants to know, I can see your teeth and they're beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Looks well done. Mm -hmm. That's, That's pretty spanky, yeah. Huh? Mm, it is. Yeah. Share, like, and comment. Come on, YouTubers, show us a comment. I tell you what, you know, you, you, you know, you know, you know what looks good when the contractor, when the guy does the work smiles. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's what it should be, you know. So I'll take that all apart next. Um, give it a give it a scuff sanding. You know, like you were talking about with your, uh, you know. 4080 primer. Um, I'll scuff that down. Actually, all I care about now is I've just got to scuff it enough, probably 220, mm -hmm. so that the next um, coat, although with with the urethane, the, this this stuff works a lot like lacquer, yeah. so that so they melt together. Um, it's not so so anything anything you add onto it adds to the one main thickness of, of finish. When you're working with poly, you're actually putting a coat over a coat over a coat. Yeah. So when you sand down poly, polyurethane, if you rub through that coat, you, you, you see the next layer underneath it and you end up with these witness, witness lines. But uh, So I'll scuff that to probably 220 just so that uh, it has something to grab a hold of. And uh, then I'll build up enough finish that I can start to polish it. That uh, The dash top is pretty close to being ready to polish out. Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. There's your her material that she's thinking about using her for her seats. It's ostrich. Um, that's where all the feathers would have come out when we plucked it. Um, but we'll see as we go, I guess. Nothing's for sure except for the dash. <laughs> it's very dash and a big. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Beautiful. It'd be nice to make a desk like that. Have your gauges and... <laughs> Amazing.
Gorgeous. I can't say anything better. better. Beautiful job. It's great. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess teamwork. We may as well sign you with Heavy Baby. We've been long enough. Yeah. Okay. Share and like and comment. If you do not comment on something like that, you are missing out. Tell us what you think, good or bad. And if it's bad, they'll probably block you anyways. <laughs> keep it to yourself. Yeah, yeah, keep it to yourself. You know what your mama told you. If you got nothing good to say, be quiet. Right? That's how it goes, isn't it? Everybody should have been taught that. Or I think they should have. And also, if you're throwing out bad comments, are you teaching that to your kids? Because you shouldn't be. You know what I'm saying? Have a good one, everybody. Like and comment.